is our definition of success valuable or not? And I think especially in today's crazy internet world where we're exposed to everything, deciding what we're choosing to define as success is, is a more important question than ever before. What we are is just an aggregation of what we choose to value in this world. If I value money more than anything else, that will come to define me through my actions, my behaviors, what I invest my time and attention into. If I value family, that will define who I am because everything else will flow from that. For me, success means creating a life and creating a world with better problems. Like our mind plays this little trick on us, which is when we want something, our brain only shows us the good side of it. It doesn't show the sacrifice required for it. Instead of thinking about what benefits I want in my life, I try to think about what problems do I want in my life. I use this analogy of a car. If your consciousness is a car, you have two brains in it. You have a feeling brain and a thinking brain. Most people's assumption is that the thinking brain is the responsible one driving and the feeling brain is like the bratty little kid in the passenger seat screaming and pointing at stuff out the window and it's like it's the job of your thinking brain to like keep two hands on the wheel and be like shut up shut up trying to drive here as a culture we look at anybody who fails to control their impulses or their emotions as somebody who's just fundamentally failing to drive their own car we see it as a failure of willpower and discipline but the truth is, if you, if you dig into all the psychological literature, the feeling brain is actually driving the car. And he's a little bit crazy. I compare him to like an angry boyfriend who refuses to stop for directions. Like he just wants to go wherever he wants to go. And he's not gonna listen to anything. The thinking brain is actually in the passenger seat. Like our conscious mind is a passenger in our own behavior who has deluded himself into thinking that he's driving even though he's not. And what I talk about is that the power of the thinking brain is that we get to draw the map. The thinking brain gets to decide what the lay of the land is. So even though we don't totally have control over what's pushing us forward, our actions, our emotions, all those things, we do have control over the meaning and the interpretation of those actions and emotions. And so to develop a real sense of control in your life, to feel a sense of self-discipline, it's not about beating your emotions into submission because that just causes greater neuroticism and compulsion. The trick is, is that you gotta get the two brains to talk to each other. And it's hard because they speak different languages. You know, so instead of like, just trying to get your feeling brain to shut up, you need to ask your feeling brain, well, how does this make you feel? You know, it's like, oh, how, how does waking up at 5 a.m. and going to the gym feel? And the feeling brains will be like, oh, that feels awful. Like, why would you ever do that? And then the thinking brain needs to be like, okay, okay, that's okay, I hear you. But why does it feel bad? You know, what about 6 a.m.? feeling brain's like, well, that's not as bad. And it would feel nice to work out, I guess. You know, and so you, it becomes this like negotiation between the two sides of yourself. And there are a lot of like kind of mental tricks to like kind of work with your emotions, get the feeling brain pointed in the direction you want it, rather than just fighting it for your entire life.